So this is Zoe. She is actually a border collie, but she just doesn't look like one. All of her brothers and sisters are long-haired and black. She came out kind of wire-haired and white, so she's a good girl. Oh. So Zoe really is a part of our family. She's a best friend and there's few things like that in life that greet you every day at the door the way she does. So she's a big part of our family and I take her on a walk every day. Um, we're definitely in tick country. Um, grasses, brushes, downfall tend to be in the thick of it. So ticks have to be something on our mind. We're just pretty diligent about checking her after we get done. It'd be nice to know how to maybe start to proactively take care of that. Well, there's a lot of tick prevention choices. Treatment. FibroGuard. Uh, this takes care of ticks in five minutes. Well, Whatever that means. Uh... We actually have a veterinarian office right across the street from uh, our office. So we're gonna go talk to Dr. Richardson and she is going to tell us how to keep the ticks off our dogs. I, my impression is in Montana, we really have a pretty minimal flea problem. We see more ticks than fleas. Um, so unless you actually have an existing problem or have had a problem in the past, as far as flea control goes, I don't worry too much about it. Okay. But tick prevention, especially as we start into the early spring when it starts to warm up just a little bit but it's still kind of moist, um, either one of the spot-on products or a good flea spray, flea and tick spray. Okay. That's what I would usually recommend. Uh, is that something that I'm applying to my dog every time, like let's say I'm going out this weekend, so I'm applying it to my dog for this weekend, and if I go out the following weekend, do I have to reapply? Or? And that's one approach. If you use a flea and tick spray, um, which I really like for tick prevention because it's a repellent as opposed to waiting for the ticks to bite to kill them, which some of the spot-on products require, you would have to spray it every time you went out. Um, but it's usually really effective that okay. way, and that way they're not wearing it when they don't need it. Uh, if I'm planning to go out on a Saturday, mm -hmm. when should I apply that spray to my dog? I would probably apply it when you get out of the car and get ready to head into the tick infested area. Okay, so it can be that quick. It yep. can be, we're ready, we're at the trailhead, spray down the dog, yep. and we're good to go. Yep, it's just going to be on their hair, it's not absorbed into the skin and redistributed, so you can put it on right before you head out. Uh, did you know with those products, might be brand specific, I'm not sure, um, my dog likes to get in the rivers and things like that when we're hiking around, <laughs> is that going to wash some of that product Probably off? Probably so. Probably, okay. Yeah. Now the spot on products, whether that's a veterinary brand or an over the counter brand, are usually water resistant or waterproof. Those you're going to need to put on at least 24 hours in advance. Okay. They're going to last for probably a month at a time. Um, like I said, are water resistant or waterproof. Most of those don't repel the ticks. They may still get ticks on them. They'll kill the ticks, but the ticks may hang around until they've had a blood meal and then die. Okay, so those products are working by putting something in the dog's blood, tick decides to take a taste, and then that's what's going to kill them. Yeah, and it's a little more technical than that. Okay. It's not necessarily sitting in the bloodstream, but it's redistributed to the skin, to the hair, to the oil glands, but it requires some contact with the tick and the dog. The fleas, especially as you get into the areas that are a little more moist, may be more of a problem. And if fleas are a problem, then I would start with one of those spot-on products early, early spring or maybe even into early summer, kind of depending on the weather. Because I feel like there's a lot of information out there mm -hmm. and so ticks on my dog. Then I find him, wherever that is, and it's decide and it's 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 bitten and it's doing its thing. So Best practice for me as a dog owner to address the tick that is now feeding on my animal. Okay. 
if you're not squeamish, you can remove the tick yourself. Okay. Um, you can either do it with a pair of tweezers, mm -hmm. um, probably a flat edge tweezer as opposed to a pointy one that you're going to accidentally pinch your dog. Or there's some really neat tick removal devices that are usually kind of spoon shaped with a little wedge oh. at the end that kind of scoops down around the tick and then you can pop it out. Okay. You're not supposed to use your bare hands because of the unlikely potential that you could get Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever or something like that from the contaminated blood. I admit I use my fingers, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you're not supposed to. Okay. Um, if you use a gloved hand, um, you could do use, use your fingertips or with the tweezers you want to grab right down next to the skin, pull back gently, make sure you get the mouth parts when you pull the tick off. Okay. And, you know, and if you're ever unsure or just don't want to deal with it, most veterinary offices are happy gotcha. to remove ticks for you. Okay. Um, sometimes a flea spray applied right on that tick will kill them and make them release as well. Okay. Okay. Don't burn them with matches. Don't cover them with nail polish. Don't do other weird stuff. Don't do all that weird. No. no. Not to your dog. Not That's to your dog. Not, not um, while they're attached. <laughs> okay. That's good. So I can remove them. Oh, absolutely. Excellent. So that is flea and tick prevention. Um, make sure that if you do have any questions or concerns uh, regarding your area or your animal, um, to always check with your vet because uh, that's always going to be the safest bet. But um, certainly the practices that we discussed here in this show uh, will be a good way for you to uh, start your dog off right during tick season. Make sure to keep getting us questions uh, for the show. Uh, you can do that. Uh, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, Snapchat, um, Twitter. Uh, get those questions in. Use the hashtag AskNorth40 and we'll be sure to get your question answered and even uh, featured on a show. You good girl. Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Denied. And a special thank you to Dr. Richardson for helping us out with this episode. Thank you so much for your time and all your knowledge.